Hello and welcome to the next Prepomex tutorial. This time I will show you how to create a simplified FE model of a bolted joint with preload. So let's create a new model first. I will use the default settings and now I will import the geometry. This is a uh, simplified model of bolted joint. Uh, as you can see I am using symmetry here. And uh, basically the bolt is one part. Actually it's divided in two separate parts but I will then merge them. Uh, I will tell you later why I need uh, two parts for the bolt. Uh, and uh, there are various levels of simplification when modeling bolted joints. You can for example model uh, bolts uh, using beam elements connected to the surface with couplings uh, or you can use even full model with threads but uh, in this case it's a mm, let's say me medium level of simplification so I have a solid model of the bolt uh, but it's uh, one part uh, so the shank is uh, merged with head and nut and it's not uh, too complex. Uh, Alright, so mm, let's uh, create mesh first, uh, but uh, before uh, meshing I will merge those two uh, parts, so we create a compound. So let's create a compound part and now I can define the mesh. Uh, so I will specify the meshing parameters, I will use uh, 3 millimeters for maximum element size and now I'll create the mesh. Alright, the mesh is created so I can proceed to analysis setup. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do uh, is uh, apply um, boundary layer. Uh, I'll tell you why it is needed. So um, for this purpose I will show only this uh, part. Uh, so I will hide the rest and I will uh, show only. Uh, and now um, I will zoom uh, on this surface and uh, here I will use model, tools, create boundary layer. And now I can select this face, uh, I will leave default thickness and when I click OK you'll see that there will be a very thin uh, layer of uh, wedge elements created here. This is necessary because of Calculix requirements for pretension section and the requirements are that uh, on this surface, so prete pretension surface, um, there can be no elements uh, with uh, that, that don't share any faces with uh, with the surface, but uh, have some uh, nodes or edges on the surface. So basically, mm, I, all elements that are in, uh, that uh, have their nodes or edges on the surface must also share a face with, with the surface. And this may not be the case when not using uh, this boundary layer, when using just tetrahedral elements. There can be some elements that only have a single node here, for example, or single edge, uh, but not uh, face. And to make sure that uh, their faces or faces of elements uh, uh, sharing some, some parts with, with this face are also mm, shared with the surface, I need to create uh, those wedge elements uh, that always share uh, one face with the surface. So mm, that's uh, why this is needed. Mm, and now uh, I'll bring back the visibility of all parts and I can hide the mesh uh, so mm, I can proceed to the setup of, of the analysis. Uh, so let's define material first. Uh, this will be a standard material as I will use steel uh, and uh, I will specify uh, the values used also in, in previous tutorials. Mm, and uh, I will also create a section, I will apply it to the whole uh, model and uh, alright, that's it. So mm, now before proceeding to s steps, uh, I will also define connections. Uh, so mm, I will use uh, this search contact pairs tool and uh, I will search for uh, tie constraints first uh, and uh, I will use tie constraints for, the, for this region and this one. Uh, so I will delete uh, this pair and use only those. Mm, and uh, for those tie constraints I also need to make a small modification because um, I prepared uh, surfaces for them. Uh, so as you can see here mm, there are small surfaces that are prepared for, for tie constraints so I don't have to use the, the whole surface here. And uh, for this reason I I'm going to, to edit this uh, tie constraint so I will exclude, I will use control to remove this uh, the surface and leave only this small piece here. And I will do the same for, mm, for the bottom one so mm, I will uh, select master region and uh, remove this this face here and only leave the, the small here one here 
uh, for connection with, with Bolt. All right, now uh, I will also define contact interaction. So let's create surface interaction, surface behavior, uh, default settings, and now I will use the search contact pairs tool. I will switch to contact, search, uh, and now I just need to remove this one and this one because they were already defined with tie constraints, and I will only leave this pair uh, and this one will be uh, with de defined with contact. Uh, all right, so now I can proceed to step setup. Mm, so uh, the first uh, step uh, will be static step with geometric nonlinearity, mm, and uh, for this step I'll define boundary conditions uh, in the following way. So I will fix um, the uh, faces of, of the nut here, and I will specify all translation of degrees of freedom. Uh, and now I will also define uh, symmetry boundary conditions. So I will select uh, all the faces uh, that lie on the uh, symmetry plane. And of course I will use y-axis here for this boundary condition. Uh, so that's uh, all when it comes to um, boundary conditions in this step. Uh, and I just need to um, define the pretension force. So I will use loads. Uh, but first, before I do this, I will again uh, hide the display of the remaining parts, show only this one. Uh, because I'm going to apply pretension force to this face here, and the one mm, that uh, was treated with boundary layer. All right, so mm, let's uh, create pretension load, uh, and I will select this face. Uh, you can use force or displacement. I will use force in this case, and I will specify the value uh, of 450 newtons. That's because I'm using symmetry here. The, the full uh, force is 900 newtons, uh, as we'll see in, in spread in, in my sheet with analytical cal calculations. Uh, so let's uh, confirm this, and now you can see a symbol showing uh, that uh, pretension was, was defined here. So I'll bring back the visibility of all parts, mm, and uh, that's everything that I need in this first step. I will copy this step now, uh, or actually duplicate it. Uh, and now in the second step, I, I can hide this one. In the second step, uh, I just need to make some small modifications to loads. Uh, boundary conditions remain the same, but uh, I will edit load. Uh, and uh, I will change to displacement here and select uh, fixed. Uh, that's needed because um, if you want to, mm, basically in the second step in which actual load is applied to the bolt or, or to the bolted joint, uh, you need to freeze the mm, pretension from the first step uh, because otherwise uh, the pretension from, from the first step will continue working. The bolt will be stretched uh, unphysically basically and, and won't respond properly to, to applied loads. So in order to, mm, to freeze that pretension and make it stop working and make it possible to apply uh, actual loads uh, to the bolted joint, you need to f use this uh, fixed um, option here to uh, make sure that loads can be normally applied uh, to the bolt uh, and it won't be uh, it won't keep uh, basically uh, being uh, stretched that for further all right so mm, i will confirm this uh, and now i also need to uh, i also need to add uh, actual load uh, this will be surface traction I will add it here uh, to the top surface of the head, and the value here will be uh, the value will be uh, 300 newtons. Uh, again, it's half of the actual load because I'm using symmetry here, and this will be tension. I'm going to to apply tension to this uh, joint in the second step. Uh, so mm, those are all settings that I need. Uh, I can also check if it's correctly defined with geometric linearity, uh, and now I can mm, basically submit the analysis. But there's one more thing that I need to do here. Uh, it's not necessary for the analysis itself, but for output as that, that, I'm, that I need here. Uh, so I will edit uh, Calculix keywords. Mm, and in order to uh, find the uh, force in the bolt uh, in the second step, uh, I want to, to compare it with analytical cal calculations. Uh, I need to add so-called section print. It isn't supported by Prepomex yet, so I need to use keywords. And for this purpose, I will go to pretension sections. I will copy the name of the surface from here. So mm, I have to select this name here and uh, copy it. And now I'll go to steps, step one, and uh, history outputs. Uh, I will add new keyword, and here the keyword will be uh, section uh, print. Uh, now uh, surface and the name of, of that surface, I'll paste it here. Uh, and now uh, also name of the uh, request, uh, so let's name it sp1, and uh, variable that I'm going to request. This is section uh, force. Uh, so I will confirm this. Um, and now I will be able to obtain a section force, uh, force in the bolt uh, in the second step that I'm going to compare with analytical calculations. So let's submit the analysis. The results are available now, so let's check them. I can switch uh, to true scale 
And actually, in this case, I'm interested in uh, the, the force in the bolt, so I won't be uh, checking the stresses and displacements. And instead, I'm just going to um, check the results of the section print. So for this purpose, uh, you can uh, f check the work directory here. Uh, so that's the directory where, I'll, where uh, you'll find the results uh, because they're not shown in, in Prepomex uh, for section print. And when I go to this directory, mm, I can refresh and I will find that file here. And in this file, uh, you can see the first step and the second step. Uh, and um, the result uh, that is of interest here is this one. So basically, and that's the uh, normal force um, in the bolt. In the second step, at, at, so at the end of, of the analysis, when uh, both preload and uh, actual load uh, are mm, not working because preload is not working anymore, but uh, bolt was preloaded, and then and the, the joint was loaded with actual uh, tensile force, and that's the, the result that we obtained. And now, if I go to mm, my sheet with analytical calculations, uh, you can see them here. Mm, this equation for joint stiffness is uh, based on uh, loaded elastic half space problem, uh, but there are also other equations. Uh, th this one is more complex, let's say. Uh, and uh, you can see the final value here because uh, I'm using symmetry, so this is the um, value that I'm going to find in analysis uh, for half model. And uh, if, if we compare it with the results uh, shown here, you can see that the, the agreement is very good, um, only uh, around two, 2 newtons, uh, the difference is only around 2 newtons, so uh, the agreement is really good here, and um, that's the result from the analytical calculations, you can see that the source is here, and uh, then uh, the result from, from finite uh, element uh, analysis. So that's it for this Prepomex tutorial. Mm, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, as always, feel free to ask any questions and suggest topics of future tutorials in the comments. Have a nice day and see you in the next video.